Craig, first of all, uh, what's gone wrong on the pitch since the restart? And what do the players have to do to put things right? Oh, what a good start. Yes, um, of course. We know that um, the last couple of results, I think if you, you know, take the first result against Leicester and everyone was saying um, we showed great character in getting a point back and deserved the point. I think if you put in context the Burnley game and the first half performance uh, wasn't us um, and then the Southampton performance. So we, we all know in football that results can change games. Um, we're, we're after the perfect performance as well, as well, of course, which will help in terms of getting the result. But the result at the moment is the most important. And we know that um, one result and your season can change very quickly. What do we have to do? Well, I think, you know, Everyone knows that um, the basics in football about working hard, desire, tempo, all those type of things. Um, we're not saying that um, there's no effort there. I think sometimes when the tension's there as well, it's our job as coaches as staff to make sure that they're relaxed, but they have a desire and a tempo to play. Uh, and that's what we've been working on this week. Obviously, uh... Andre Gray, Nathaniel Chalaba and Domingo Quina missed the last game. Have you, Nigel said he was going to try and get to the bottom of what had happened. Have you done that and have they been training and, and can they play against Chelsea? Um, we have got to the bottom of it and to be fair to the three of them, they apologised to staff, players, individually and collectively. Um, you know, that was a club decision. It wasn't anything to do with Premier League. That was a club decision. And that was for the health and safety of all our own players and everybody else's. And we thought, thought that was the right decision to do at the time. Um, they have apologised. They're back in training with us and they are fit for selection. And the final one from me. Uh, you must have watched the Chelsea game last night. Did you sort of get any encouragement from that? Did you see some weaknesses that you may be able to exploit? I did watch the game, but I think there's a general feeling that, um, you know, you can your, your emotions are really played with at the moment if you take too much into the watching the results. I think we've got to focus on our own, of course. I'm looking at that game to pick weaknesses, um, to pick things that we can hurt them with. Um, we've already spoke about that this week, already worked on it. But yes, I think um, the interest in watching the games is there for everyone to see. James from uh, Premier League. Hello, James. Hello there. Um, what gives you optimism, Craig, that uh, you can stay safe? Well, I think if you look at the form that we showed earlier on and you think about the performances, and I don't want to harp back, but we know what we're capable of. We know what... Um, what um, these players have put in performances in the past and also their attributes and, you know, to remind them that um, the focus has to be on us, not about anybody else, but also a, a um, desire to play, but also a willingness to accept responsibility um, as staff as well as players. Uh, and the, the encouragement I get from training this week is there has been a uh, a disappointment in their own individual and collective performances and a responsibility to try and put that right. And that's what gives me encouragement. I read that Gerard Delafeu says you have to fight like lions in order to stay safe. Do you agree with his choice of that animal there? I don't mind it. I think uh, we all know what the, the meaning is there. And, um, you know, we, we've sorely missed Gerard. And um, for him to get in touch and, and make a personal message, it shows the team spirit that we do have here. And uh, just finally from me, is there um, is Nigel going to be involved in the game? Yes. Cool. Thank you very much, Craig. Thank you. Hi, hi Craig. Uh, Mark from PA. Um, in terms of those three guys you mentioned, obviously, who missed last week, how have they been in training? Have you noticed any additional contrition or any more determination to to right those those evident wrongs well well i think in the first instance when they apologized to us all as staff and and as as a group i think um once we welcome back in we we try and get on with it as normal um you know they they've admitted they're wrong um have i noticed 
you know, that would be saying that they, they hadn't tried before. And I think um, they've settled back into it. They know they've made a mistake and um, they want to make up for it. I mean, is there any, whilst you're obviously keen to draw a line under it, is there, is there nevertheless, given how the result went last week, any danger of any discontent or, or the issue affecting team spirit? Because after all, it was these guys' mistake which led to them uh, no, not being... Not on our part. Uh, we've drawn a line under it. We move on. Um, we have mistakes from individuals during games. Um, they don't mean to make the mistakes. Um, can we rectify them? Yes, we can. The next chance of rectifying it now is against Chelsea. And if they play their part, then, um, you know, all well and good. Just finally from here, a few managers have, have referenced the levels of intensity in, ter in terms of the relatively sterile atmosphere that you're playing in. Some teams seem to find it harder than others to attain that intensity that they've had before. Has that perhaps been one of the factors behind your relatively poor form recently? Well, I think I, I go on record as saying when I was asked about the, the restart, and I think it is a, a bit of a slower tempo. I think sometimes you know that your, your home crowd, uh, and sometimes even when you're playing away and you've quietened the crowd, and you know at home when sometimes a tackle and it gets the crowd going, there has been probably a bit of that. But I think, you know, we, we're, we're playing in a new circumstances, new surroundings, and we're trying to, trying to adjust to it. Of course, the players with the technical ability, uh, the Man Cities, the, the Liverpools, seem to have adjusted very, very well. Um, we're finding it more difficult, but it's not for the one to try. Hi, Craig. You're right. Hello, Ian. Can I just take on from that? Because it seems to me there have been very few draws and teams have either started really well and won nearly all their games since the restart or started really badly and lost all their games. Why is it there's been kind of nothing, nothing in between? Why have either, why has the team either started really, really well or started really badly? I think, um, I'm not sure to put your finger on it, but I think, um, as I say, you look at the games that we've had and, um, you know, I watched most of the games last night and um, you can get a slower tempo. You can get the emotion taken out of it at times, um, but like I just said, I think we're all clubs are coming used to it. Uh, I'm sure that the more games that we had and the more adjustment we've had to it, it's all it's it's all new to us. Um, but the reason why, I think it's very hard to put your finger on it. Of course, we're all human beings at the end of the day, and we react in different ways. And whether it's pressure, whether it's tension, um, I'm not so sure. The bottom three have barely got a result between them so far. Um, and, and to be fair, haven't, haven't looked like getting a result either. Um, which means that Brighton with four points are probably within one win of safety. West Ham, after beating Chelsea, probably four points away from safety. Do you look at it and think to yourself, if we could just win one game, be it Chelsea or then be it Norwich or, or West Ham further down the line, if we could just win one game, it's going to make it with so few left so hard for the bottom three to, to catch us? I think um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't look at other people's results. But I think, again, the focus has to be on what we do. Of course, we're not looking to the next game and to the next game and to the next game. Yes, it is the Chelsea game that we have to concentrate on, not the Newcastle, not the West Ham. Um, do we worry about the other results? I think it's, again, human nature that you look. And sometimes if there's a discussion, we haven't stopped players discussing things. But there has to be a focus on us. Um, yes, I agree with you to a certain extent that um, most of the teams down there are struggling to pick up points. But your team proved last night, you know, it can be capable. It can be capable. And uh, we know that what we've got to do. And one last one from me. So Alex Ferguson once described coming towards the end of a, a match in the season, a squeaky bum time. In terms of Watford, are we getting towards that period now? Well, I think I'm, I'm thinking we all know what he means by that, but I also think there's, I've used the word focus, there has to be a drive and a determination to succeed. And I think you, we all know what's at stake. Um, we've got some experienced professionals at ours, and even with the younger boys, we make them aware of their responsibilities and we know what their actions can, can do and drive us on. So we have to have that drive to, to get a result, um, and that's what we'll be doing. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, click here to subscribe.